172 went out to Kinshasa yesterday. 169 came back somewhat mutilated. Hmm, nasty. Well, I'll be out for lunch. Davis will be holding the fort. Right. Sorry, Emily. You're going out to sell a few secrets. I find that the bottom has dropped out of the market for British secrets. How about you? Oh, I have to take what I can get for them. Bachelors need the money more than you married men. Oh, Sarah. You're fine. Hmm? And the little bastard? The little bastard's fine, too. Oh. Good heavens, somebody's phoning us. Oh, if Sire replies to 172, send copies to the Foreign Office in the Treasury. All right. Sir, Brigadier Tomlinson wants to see you. Brigadier Tomlinson? Yes, sir. Upstairs, room A3. A3, thank you. Come in. Ah, Castle, come in. I don't think you know Colonel Daintry. How do you do? Sit down. I think I knew a cousin of yours at Cambridge. Colonel Daintry's just joined the firm. He's taken over security. I suppose you mean my cousin Roger. I haven't seen him for years. He's at the Treasury. He got a first in mathematics. I got a poor third in history, so I'm in the Secret Service. I explained to Colonel Daintry that only you and Davis deal with top secret cables as far as Section 6A is concerned. Of course, Watson is in charge of 6. He sees them too. Davis was at uh, Reading University, I believe. You've been having a chat with him, have you? Well, I talked to Davis about you, so now I'm talking to you about Davis. It's uh, an open check. I gather that, uh, politically, he's a bit on the left, hmm? Oh, yes, he's a member of the Labour Party. And you? I have no politics, as Davis no doubt told you. Hmm. Well, there's nothing personal in all this, you know, but it's, uh, I mean, one's got to stick with the drill. Of course. I shan't keep you long. I have a train to catch at King's Cross. The shooting weekend? Yes, how did you know? Oh, <laughs> yes, elementary. My dear Watson. Hmm? Watson is our chief in Section 6. Ah, well, actually, I mean... It's a purely routine. I mean, there are so many rules that sometimes some of them get neglected. It's human nature. There's the regulation about not taking work out of the office. Briefcases and so on. Thank you. Yes, you live in the country. Find it a bit inconvenient? Well, it's less than an hour by train. We have a child, you see, and a dog. Mm -hmm. Huckleberry Finn, good? Yes, in my opinion, it's better than Tom Sawyer. Oh, mm. uh, you get your cheese from Paxton's. Yes. You prefer their cheese to Fortnum's? Not particularly, but a cheese shop. There's something foolhardy and English about it. What on earth are Maltesers? A sort of chocolate. Mm. Good. And they're a peace offering. I was disagreeable to my son this morning. Didn't mind, did you? I asked the same of Davis. Davis wasn't carrying a briefcase when I saw him. Uh, that's true. But I was thinking about what he had in his overcoat pockets. Is he in the habit of taking reports out of the office to look through over lunch? Not that I'm aware. Very embarrassing, you know, having to ask men to empty their raincoat pockets like schoolboys. <laughs> Not that we haven't got complete confidence in both of you, of course. Kyo. Do you think those teaser things would do for my hostess? I'd like to take her something out of the ordinary. Well, I think they should fit the building. Send the porter out. Do you think Fortnum's have them? I don't know. They're very inexpensive. Oh, I don't want to seem niggardly. Go for quantity. Fiver? No, tenner, maybe. Something like that. Nicely done up. Do you think it might amuse her? Definitely. No, well, I think that covers it. Thank you.
apartment. Well, what's wrong? Sam's got measles. He'll do all right. Just keep him quiet. Would you like a whiskey, Doctor? No, thanks. I haven't finished yet. Hypochondria is sweeping the parish. And some genuine cases of measles, of course. Keep Sam's curtains drawn tomorrow. Not too much light. Thank you for coming to see him, Doctor. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, I was worried. Everything seemed wrong. No wife, no child, no dog. He's in the garden eating grass. No whiskey on the sideboard. What a creature of habit you are. I know. I don't want any interesting variations. A whiskey bottle on the lawn and the dog on the sideboard. <laughs> Everything is normal, except Sam's temperature. Can I see Sam? He was almost asleep. Better leave him for a while. Ah, oh, hello, Buller. Why don't you bark when I came home? You're a failure. He's not a complete failure. He frightened the electricity man this morning, even though he was only trying to be friendly. I feel safer with him when you're not here. And Sam loves him. Finish the book. Ah, I need a change. Perhaps I'll have a go at war and peace before it's too late. We haven't got it. I'm going to buy a coffee on Monday. Cheese. Small teasers for Sam. Why was the electricity man afraid of Buller? He knows him. This one was new. He looks awfully hot and dry. So would you if you had a temperature of 103? Are you sad we haven't made a child? I'm worried about him starting school. Uh, he's a good runner. In England, you're accepted. If you're good at any kind of games. I don't want him to be an honorary white. No, we don't. You love him, don't you? Yes. It's so strange, a little bastard. That's what Davis calls him. Davis? He doesn't oh, know. No, no, of course not. He calls all children little bastards. I've got something. about something. No, it's nothing really. Something happened at the office today. New security man throwing his weight about. It irritated me. It's not their fault. It's the fault of the job. Yes, but I've been with the firm for more than 15 years. I ought to be trusted by this time. I love the firm. Hmm. The firm gave you to me. And I love it till it takes you away. Like the Lord. <laughs> 